beauty junkie welcome to my channel today I'm getting into my entire Pat McGrath collection you can see behind me here I have it all laid out uh, it's a lot to go through um, I could take this video into a lot of different directions but I'm gonna kind of go over my favorites my recommendations based on what I've tried from what I have in my collection so let's get into this really fun and exciting video on Pat McGrath all right guys, I'm gonna do a truly full face of Pat McGrath. Now I don't have every sort of makeup product from her brand, so we're gonna get a little creative. I really only have concealer for complexion, so that's what I'm going to use all over my face. We're gonna try that out, see how that looks. I'm a little nervous. I don't have any brow products. Um, I'm gonna be using some eyeshadow for my brows because their Pat doesn't have any brow products. I'm going to also be using an eyeshadow for blush because there's no blush products. So as I said, we're going to get a little bit creative. Um, I am going to choose eyeshadows from several different palettes, um, but we're going to create, unfortunately, um, a work appropriate look, not the most exciting or fun look. Um, but, but I do have to go on a Zoom call later for work, so that's... That's why I'm going to do that. If I have time later, I may film a more fun look, take off my eyeshadow, um, and try some different stuff from the all the palettes. Um, so I'm also going to be using the under eye powder to set my face. We're going to see how that goes. Of course, I'll be using the highlighters from the highlighter palette. Um, I have mascara and eyeliner, so we're good on that front. Um, so I can, I think I can make this work pretty easily. Um, so I have, you know, moisturizer on, my skincare. I have a couple blemishes on my face. As you can see, I'm a little bit red. Um, but we're going to deal with that. <laughs> um, you know, it seems like my skin is okay for about a day. And then it starts breaking out again. Like my chin's cleared up a little more because, you know, hormones calm down. But then I picked up a couple spots in other places. So I don't know, life isn't fair, but we're gonna deal with it. So I have the concealer in L6, which is Light 6, the Sublime Perfection Concealer. I know, you know, this one I think has kind of mixed reviews. I think people do like the concealer for under their eyes for the most part. Um, but we're gonna try it today all over. It might be a little bit much, a little bit too drying, but it's what I have to work with. I know this color for me is a little too yellow, so I wouldn't normally do this all over. And I don't normally use concealer like this. But you know, I'm, we're doing stuff different today for this video. You may see glitter in spots on my face and that is because when I was cleaning up, attempting to clean up these palettes, I was dusting off the excess, you know, powder in the 
that goes around the shades. And as I was doing that, I could tell like the glitter is just flying everywhere. So of course it's gonna get on my face. And you know, you'll see that my palettes still look pretty dusty and dirty. So it, it's pretty hard to clean these palettes because not only are they, you know, they're black, so they show everything. But you know, they're just, I don't know, how do you guys clean up palettes without like messing up the eyeshadow or like taking forever using like a, um, a little cotton swab, a wet one, and like going around each shade. I don't know, I don't know how you guys do it. Anyways, we're gonna blend this out, this concealer, cause I look a little crazy. Um, I think I probably should have moved a little bit faster because it seems to already be setting and not <laughs> moving around as much as I would like it to. I don't know how many of you guys do this. Like, you actually don't use any foundation or tin and moisturizer. You just use concealer. And I wonder, like, does that work out for you? Does it last longer? Do you feel like you're still red? Is it too cakey? Is it too thick? Let me know your thoughts about just using concealer for your complexion. I feel like makeup artists that work on models that don't have a lot of blemishes, I know they only sometimes use concealer to just to get rid of the red areas and whatnot. But I don't feel like I have one of those complexions where even where I don't have blemishes, my skin tone is that even so that I could get away with spot concealing so I know this technique is not really spot concealing it's like face concealing but I don't know I don't know how many of you guys do that if you have concealer like you really like to use all over let me know is it the pat one is it something else I have to say, this doesn't look too bad. I think shade can be a little bit better, but it doesn't look bad. Alright, so this is the only powder I have. This is light. This is the under eye powder. But we're going to go in all over. I'm going to go underneath my eyes first. I will note I don't have any pat brushes, so I couldn't really... Um, complete this look without using other one people's brushes. Um, come to think of it, I only think she has complexion brushes. Does she even have any eye brushes? I can't even remember. Kind of funny, huh? She has all these eyeshadows but no eyeshadow brushes? Strange. Um, Alright, we're just gonna kind of tap all over. People really like this under eye powder. I don't know that it's totally necessary, but it is pretty smoothing. I got it kind of as a set um, at a discount, so I thought why not, I'll just pick this up and try it out. It's pretty lightweight feeling. I do think this is probably going to be a little drying for my whole face. Um, so Pat doesn't have a bronzer, which kind of stinks. Um, I would love her to come out with a bronzer and blushes and just more complexion options in general. Um, but we do have a blush shade from her Mothership 8 palette. A lot of people have been using this one as a blush shade. It's kind of a, I don't know, peachy very peach shade, which is not my typical go-to for blush, but it's kind of the only blush option out of all of her palettes that I have, minus Midnight Sun. Um, so we're going to use this as blush. So peach tends to look a, a little bit orange on me. So yeah, I look a little pale. 
I think you could probably find a good contour in her eyeshadow, but um, I really need some bronzer. <laughs> I don't really see myself seeing a bronzer shade, but I do have a bronze highlighter that maybe I could use up here. I'm just going to get real creative. I'm just trying to warm up the face with this blush. I think that, that accomplishes it. We're going to go into these two shades and do some highlight. All right, so eyebrows, um, always had sparse eyebrows, always felt the need to fill them in. Um, she doesn't even have like a clear brow gel or clear mascara that I can use. So I'm just gonna have to go in with a powder eyeshadow. <sighs> I suppose you can use an eyeliner, but that's a little scary. Um, so this is Mothership 2, and I'm gonna go in with this dark brown shade with the slanted brush here and uh, let's see we're gonna hope for the best it looks a little bit dark all right I picked out four palettes that are kind of in the warm neutral range at least some of the shades are this is number two the one right here uh, this is number five this is number seven and eight so I'm going to use some shades from all four of these palettes and again I'm going for a really um, light, natural, and professional look just because I have to be on a work call later today uh, with video. <laughs> so I think what I'm going to do is use the lightest shade from number two and that is this guy here. And then I'm going to mix this warm brown shade from number five and this kind of cooler sort of pinkish brown shade from number seven and then we're gonna go in with this maroon shade from number eight and I think from one of these palettes I'll choose probably an inner corner sort of highlight shade and we'll leave that uh, at the end just want to give you an overview of what I'm gonna be using so light a shade from Mothership 2 and I just kind of want to do like um, just sort of an overall coating application, a wash over my whole eyelid is what I'm trying to say. Um, so this isn't one that isn't like super, super sparkly. It doesn't have a lot of reflect. It gives um, just a really pretty, subtle sort of shine. So that is why I chose it. To be honest, some of you probably are barely going to see this on me. But again, like I'm not going for super glamorous. I think by, you know, focusing on a professional look from Pat, you can see sort of the versatility. Now, do you need to pick up four palettes to do that? Absolutely not. I'd say um, you're going to get the most uh, fun out of Pat if you use her really bright and special shades, but um, you can get away with doing really a variety of looks. Alright, so I have that sheer wash of color. Now I want to do a lid shade that mixes um, a warm brown from number 5 and this cooler pink brown from number seven. So I'm just gonna go back and forth between both palettes. Just to get a different sort of tone. I want a little bit of definition. I wanna look alive, but we're not going for super dramatic here. I also want to limit the number of shades I'm using because I want people to see that you can go through these palettes fairly quickly, come up with an eyeshadow look fairly quickly, and you don't have to think too much about it. So what I like about mixing these shades is it really puts the, um, the warmer brown into, in sort of the more neutral zone and then the cooler pink isn't too cool. 
So it really gets in that neutral zone. Now, a lot of you think, wow, this is really boring. And it is totally boring. <laughs> but I just love how fast I can do my eye look. I'm going to go in the warmer brown underneath my eye. Now I'm going to go in with this maroon shade here from number eight and we're gonna go on the outer crease for a little deeper definition all right I think that really accomplished deepening up the outer corners and the crease gave me a little bit more color than what I had before pretty happy with that um, I do want to do a little bit of inner corner and I'm going to go in with, I'm going to go into number five. We're going to do the lightest shade here. And this one is pretty light gold, um, but it's just a little bit more reflective than the light shade in number two. I think inner corner I really like because it just makes me look a little bit more awake, a little bit more bright eyed opens up the eye a little bit on the brow bone same shade for you all just a quick little tutorial of mixing different palettes and using pretty you know neutral sort of warm tone shades here um, I do want to do a little bit of eyeliner and I think probably the fastest thing for me to do would be to use the black pencil but I don't want to be super harsh today I want to keep things as natural as possible so I'm going to use the black eyeshadow from number two so palettes one through three I'll have a matte black eyeshadow and I'm going to use it with my little pencil here and just kind of smudge it lightly drag it across I don't want harsh black line. I think that's a pretty natural look. The Pat McGrath Labs Fetish Eyes Mascara. This is the first mascara. I don't have the new one. Um, I have to say I wouldn't recommend this one. Um, I don't know why, but it takes me forever to build up, you know, length. I have to use quite a bit. I have to go in a few times to really get the formula to go to my lash, the end of my lashes. I just feel like when I stick it in at the base, it doesn't drag up very well. And you probably can't tell that, it probably looks fine, but I just noticed this between other mascaras that things sort of get stuck at the base and don't take it to the top. It's a pretty square brush. It's not tapered at the end. So when you're trying to get into corners, it's kind of hard. I think this is like one of those love it or hate it. But I don't know. I think there's been a lot of mixed reviews on this mascara and I think for a good reason. I definitely wouldn't repurchase it. Doesn't do anything fabulous for me. I mean, if you like the way my eyelashes look, great, pick it up. But um, it seems like people that have tried both of her mascaras, they're preferring the new one. So that's good. I mean, she's improving, right? All right, guys, I started filming, started applying makeup before I started filming. <laughs> so I cleaned up my eyes, mascaras, mascaras on, eyeshadows on. I did put on a lip pencil. This is Suburbia. And this is what it looks like. I'm not a overdrawer, as you can see. <laughs> I'm gonna be putting on the Matte Trance Soft Core uh, lipstick. And this is kind of a dusty pink. I really like the lipstick formulas of Pat quite a bit actually. Um, I have the Matte Trance and the Luxe Trance formula and if you want to know the difference. I wouldn't say like this 
to some of you, this isn't mad enough. And her formula is not like super matte. It's really comfortable. It's pretty nice. For those of you like normal lipsticks or satins, this is gonna be a little bit dry for you. I'm sure you, once you see the name matte, you probably uh, run away from it anyway. Um, the Lux Trance is more of the satin shade with like a sheen to it. Um, I really like that formula as well. Um, I haven't tried like the super glittery ones or the balms, um, but I have one of the new Divinals on the way. So I'll be trying that new sort of type of lip product that just came out. Um, I have a variety of lip glosses in different um, sort of textures, I suppose. They're all lust gloss, but they have different sort of amounts of shimmer. Um, this one is like a regular shimmer, I believe. Or this one's a regular shimmer, and these are like super shimmery. Um, this one is like barely shimmery. Um, I really like the lip glosses a lot. If I was rich, I would probably pick up more. Um, I'm just gonna top, let's see, I'm gonna do Dare to Bear in the middle, and this is a little mini one, just for a little bit of shine. I think this provides a little bit of glamour, maybe too much for some of you for the office. If you wanted to like tone down the eyes a little bit, I would not do the black um, shadow. I would just do mascara and you can probably get away with doing like one of the deeper shadows. Take out the shimmer um, and just kind of really tone it down a little bit more. Um, you could also go without the gloss, just do kind of a lip balm or do like the lip liner and just some gloss. Whatever you prefer. Um, I'm really happy with this look. I mean, this didn't take me long at all. and. You know, even though you can see my blemishes, I'm surprised by how my face looks with just using concealer and some powder. So I'm pretty happy. Um, I'm not surprised because I love this brand so much. All right. So before I get into like what should you buy, uh, what and and I'm gonna kind of categorize that like if you're new to the brand, what should you buy? And if you're already a collector of Pat, what should you pick up? I want to kind of do it from those two perspectives and then, but before that I want to talk about what can be improved from the brand because I think many people have noticed some of the packaging issues and I certainly have experienced some. Um, first of all, let's talk about the Mothership palettes. Love the packaging. I love the limited edition colors. I really wish there was more colors so you could really tell apart the palettes from the outside. Some of these, the, the older ones, don't even have the number on the back. So like one through three, you cannot tell from the outside which one is one, two, or three. All it says is mothership on the back so that's pretty annoying <laughs> um, but you can't so you kind of have to memorize like this is number two um, but as time goes on she started putting the numbers on the back which is really smart along that note please put the shade names on the back because they come with like whoops they come with little cards with the shade names which is great but you, I never keep these with the palette. Like I don't stick them in the palette because they don't really fit. I keep them with the packaging. So that's why I point to the shades. I don't have them memorized. But if this was on the back of the palette, maybe smaller, that would be super helpful, especially for people like me that review, that talk about the shades. Just be so much more convenient. And this goes for any eyeshadow company. Put the names in the back. If you want people to talk about your shades, 
in the proper names. Um, that being said, I think this is really pretty. Other people have commented that they wish the outer packaging, the black packaging, reflected the beauty of the outer packaging that it comes in. Like if this was on top of this, people would love this so much more. But it looks classy, it's really pretty, it's got the black on the back. Um, I really love the limited edition shades, I think this is really cool. Um, but yes, I agree. I wish you could see this on the outside because what I do is I keep all, all the boxes in a drawer and I'm saving them of course. I have a ton of them taking up a lot of room, but um, you know while I appreciate this You can't really enjoy it every day when you look at this. So that kind of stinks Also, I love how heavy these are but because they're super heavy they break and the shadows pop out and especially shipping to me. Now for me, like if I'm traveling this with this, I make sure it's well padded in my suitcase or I would even carry this in my purse if I had room um, just so it travels okay. But I know like shipping to me, if it's not in good bubble wrap and it's not secured, like they break, one of mine came popped out. I'm not cool with that, but I think just knocking around in the box, it's not like a typical lightweight cardboard. Um, it's just more likely to break on the inside. So it's really dependent on the shipper, the packaging around it, whether it's going to arrive to you okay. So those are my critiques about the palette. Otherwise, I think the format is beautiful and lovely. The, you know, the large pans all in a row, I think it's just very classy. The big mirror, the beveled mirror, you know, you can't complain. <laughs> now with the six pan palettes, I wish she made them like this, but smaller and maybe a little wider, but a lot of people complain about the accordion style packaging. I do think she's changing it and improving it, which is good. I think this sort of envelope sort of rubber band thing is unique. You don't see that with other brands, but um, I don't know. It is sort of hard to like take pictures, show this to people when it's kind of like floppy. It's not the best, right? Also, I think the formulas in these are not quite the same as the larger palettes. I think they should be the same, but you know, not up to me. What else? Let's talk about lipsticks. Packaging. Gorgeous, right? I mean, you have the lips, black and gold. I mean, very heavy, very weighty. But I've had some issues. So my first lipstick, Beautiful Stranger. And I've had issues with the cap, this part getting stuck in the lid. So it just totally comes apart real easy. And I'm not trying to do this on purpose. Um, but this essentially comes out and gets stuck up in here. So when you take it out sometimes, it gets stuck in the lid. And I just think the glue isn't great. Hopefully I didn't just ruin this. It does go back together, it still works. It's just, I've noticed that there's some defects with this packaging that needs to be fixed. Hopefully with her new stuff coming out, that's been addressed. But I think it's sort of the same style, it looks like, of packaging. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, otherwise, I think with the eyeliner, I think this is gonna dry out because it doesn't feel like this really secures on the lid. The pencil is fine, just typical packaging. Just gotta make sure it's on. Otherwise, I think the lipsticks are flawless. I mean, the lip gloss packaging is, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, everything works really good. Lip liners, everything's great. I actually like the packaging of this. 
Um, I think it could have been a little bit more special. I like the bevel sort of pebble look, but it's a little lackluster. The words are kind of wearing off and you know, it, it's, it could have little, been a little heavier, um, I would say. And then same sort of goes for the concealer, just really sort of basic looking. Um, there's no sort of gold around the top like the lipsticks, you know. Um, there's a little bit of gold writing, but like the lip glosses, there's not even like the PMG Lab sort of logo that she has on everything else, which I thought, I think other people pointed out it's a little bit strange. I think with her face products, there's a little bit of inconsistency even with the outer box packaging. If you look at this style, it's very plain. <laughs> there's a little window for the concealer, but when you compare it to like the lipsticks, eyeliners, lip liners. I mean, look how much detail is in this packaging for that kind of stuff. But then the concealer, it came in this. So it just felt like things are a little bit rushed. It's a little bit of afterthought, the face products. But I mean, some people care about that stuff, others do not. Um, what else can I think of? and complain about. Um, I think overall, the shades in her palettes I cannot really complain about other than the six pan. I think there is a difference in quality. Um, all right, so let's get into sort of my preference and uh, recommendations for newbies to the brand. Now, again, excluding Midnight Sun, number six or not taking that one into account. Um, but if you're a newbie, and I'll caveat that with you're a newbie to the brand, but maybe you don't have a big makeup collection or you're just getting into makeup. You wanna buy something nice. You want a luxury palette. Okay, I don't totally recommend that, but I get where you're coming from. Because I will say, while these are easy to apply overall, all her shadows, they're pigmented. So you have to be used to pigmented shadows and knowing how to blend them and using the right brushes. Otherwise, it can go wrong for a beginner. I just want to say that. <laughs> but if you know how to use pigmented shadows, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay. I think for a beginner, I think it's obvious to say like a, a easy palette, a neutral palette is going to be your, your safety. I will say that this was my first palette and you know, while I like makeup, I've liked it for years. I think this was a good one to start with um, because it has such a variety and it really sort of speaks to the greatness of Pat. Um, you have a few mattes in here. You have three mattes, a couple shimmers, a metallic, and two special shades. Three special shades, actually. And you have some glitter. So I like the variety in this one. Um, you're not going to love every shade. You're not going to be able to apply every shade in one look. But it gives you a nice variety, and it's warm-toned, and which a lot of people like. Um, I really like this palette even still today. It was my first one. So I think if you're a newbie, even though this kind of looks scary with the red, it's really wearable, all of it. My only real complaint is the purple doesn't blend well to me. So that's kind of a knock on that one. Looking back at one through three, I would say I would knock out three for a beginner because there's a lot of wild shades in here that you probably won't be comfortable with and a couple darker ones. Um, you know, if you have a deep skin tone, you won't be afraid of darker shades, but if you're medium or fair, some of these might be a little bit too much for you. So I'm gonna knock out number three. Now looking at one and two, I think overall there's a lot of good basic shades in both of these palettes. If you prefer a cool toned, I definitely suggest starting with number one. 
and you can build upon this palette with the other palettes. But I think this is a good starting point if you love cool tone shades. This is an amazing palette. Really recommend this one for beginners. Now this is also a good one for beginners. There's a little, it's a bit more warmer toned, a little bit more variety, especially with this green. And you have a variety of textures in here. So, so far I recommend either five, one, or two for newbies. It all depends on color preference, what attracts you. You need to really pay attention to what attracts you because that will tell you if you're gonna use it a lot or not. My last palette I can recommend is number seven. This is the first um, Divine Rose palette. A lot of people like it for good reason. I think this is one of their best sellers of all time. It's just very wearable. A lot of great, easy to wear tones, and I'll, I have to say I'll, all these shades really go well together. You could use all of the shades in one look. So also a good recommendation. So to recap, if you're a beginner, <laughs> palettes one, two, five, and seven, I would recommend just because they have a lot of wearable shades. Now, so take a look at those online, see what appeals to you, and what you don't already have in your collection. If you don't have a lot of cool tones, I would suggest this one. If you have some warm tones, but you wanna have a little more fun, go for number five. Number two, a lot of neutral colors. If you want to pop a green, go for it. Just know that it's not super opaque. You have to build it up a little bit. But pretty good palette. Um, number seven, definitely beautiful. If you, these shades really appeal to you, get this one. All right, I think those probably aren't huge surprises um, that I'm recommending those for beginners. Now, as far as eyeshadows for um, a collector or more experienced pat people, um, if you haven't tried these palettes, you should get them. Now, four is available now, it used to not be. I would definitely recommend getting this one, especially if you're really into makeup, And but these are all metallics. If you don't like metallic formulas, you don't like that much shimmer and shine, you're not gonna like this, but I think there's such a huge variety of shades in here that this is a really nice piece to have in your collection and everything was really gorgeous. I can't complain about this palette. Plus it has, you can get the special gold packaging. It's really beautiful. This is number three. I call this the punk palette. It is really fun. If you go to a lot of parties, you go out, you're gonna want something like this in your collection. I mean, these shades here are all, I mean, so pretty. And this like smoky gunmetal shade is really unique. It's, there's nothing like it in any of the other palettes. Really, really fun. Plus you get a good sort of basic black, a good sort of shimmery brown, and shimmery sort of light gold shade. This one is a lot of fun, but if you really want to have a lot of fun, I really probably over the other two I just showed you, which is four and seven, I really recommend eight, the one that just came out. This is a really good one. The, to me, this is like quintessential Pat. It's a the, the party sister to number seven, and this is the special sort of multi-chrome shade. I mean, just really pretty really recommend this guy all right I mean not too much of a surprise there either let's talk about the other products I you know I think the mascara is the the concealer is good but I don't think I'm gonna be repurchasing it just because the shade is really yellow and I kind of need to see the other shade in person to be convinced that I need it but I have a ton of other concealers open right now. I'm not gonna be rushing out to get it. I think it does a pretty good job of co covering under the eyes. I think it has a nice texture. It's not too thin. You really don't have to do a couple layers like I did, but you certainly could. I don't think it's like as thick as shape tape or anything like that, but um, 
I'm pretty happy with it, but because of the color range, I can't repurchase that one for sure. As far as the eyeliners go, I think they're really nice. I have the liquid and the pencil, both in black. The I would like to get the pencil in like the, the dark brown shade, but it's always sold out. But I think if you, you know, these are expensive. I think if you find one in the drugstore or another brand that's cheaper, I would buy it and it works for you. It's the kind of thing with black liners, like it's really a personal preference. These are both really good, really smooth. You're not gonna have to reline the same area twice. Um, I like them. If you wanna add it to your cart because you need to spend a certain amount of money, go for it, but it's not necessary. Definitely don't recommend the Fetish Eyes Mascara. I would pick the other one before picking up this one, even though I haven't tried that one. Um, lip glosses, lipsticks. I like the lipsticks. They're $38, which is a lot of money. So if you can get them on sale, that would be my preference for you. Um, I think the matte, people are gonna like it or not. Like, I don't know if people are, everyone's gonna love the matte formula. Um, I think it's kind of hard to tell what the shades are gonna look like on you unless you can see them in person and swatch them. Um, especially with like nudes and natural shades, it can be really tough to figure out is it gonna look warm or neutral on you or not. Um, so because of that, I think if you're on the fence about getting lip products, I think the safest, honestly, is the lip gloss because her formula, the Lust Gloss formula, is foolproof. I think you're pretty safe in picking out the shades from her line, and I just think the formula is really good and universally loved. Whereas the lipsticks, I think people, will, you know, are kind of uh about it. Um, I don't hear a lot of people talking about her lipsticks that much, but, you know, I have a lot of her glosses on and I would continue buying them. Um, I personally like her lipstick, but I know it, yeah, it's just a very personal thing with lipstick. Um, the lip liner I really like. It's smooth, it's pigmented. I have Suburbia, it's the only shade I have. It's a little bit warmer pink but still really nice. So for the highlighting palette, I like this a lot, but I find myself only using these two shades. This is way too dark for me. I mix these two shades, I think they're really pretty, but if you feel like you're not gonna use the whole palette, I totally get why you wouldn't buy it. Um, if you can get it discounted, pick it up, because these shades are really, really pretty. Um, but, you know, this isn't gonna work for everyone's skin tone, but if you have deeper skin tone You could probably utilize all these shades mix them all together and that probably would work the best for you um, But really really nice And that's kind of it on my comments and my recommendations I think there are some gaps in her line that need to be filled a lot of people are waiting for especially like a blush she has no blush she has no bronzer there's no eyebrow stuff. <laughs> I mean, I want a complete pat collection, you know? Um, I would like to have, see a different formula of foundation, a tinted moisturizer, something. I wish her loose powder contained more product in it. it doesn't have, it's a lot of money for what you get. I don't know. I mean, I would like to see a glowy powder, just some different stuff. Like, I appreciate all the palettes that are coming out. She's famous for her eyeshadow for a good reason. Um, but I want to see some different stuff. Now, speaking of her latest launch, the six pound palette of the new Rose Decadence palette. I don't know the name of it. <laughs> the, the new six pound palette. I, because I have Divine Rose 1 and 2, I felt like, oh, I don't really need it. Um, it's sixty dollars, sixty some dollars. I don't want to buy it right now, but I ended up getting it. It's on its way because Sephora is doing a deal. If you know, welcome back deal. If you spend a hundred dollars, you get twenty dollars off. So I got the palette and a lip, the Divinal lip, Divinal lip stuff. 
shiny <laughs> lip product. So I got those two and met them, you know, the $100 uh, criteria. So those are on the way. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't gonna get them, but I was like, well, if I can get a deal for that much, and I saw them like pop up on Sephora's website, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just get it. Because a couple of the shades did look different and a little bit and pretty. So whatever, I'm just spending all my money on Pat. Um, but I got a notification today from Sephora, an email that said, you know, sorry about the mix up on the lip to vinyl, but we're refunding you the money, but you can keep the product. You don't have to return it to us. And I was like, what are you talking about? Cause you know, when I saw the order ship, everything in the order shipped, they didn't say they were out of stock or anything like that. So I called them up and they said, oh, we sent you the wrong shade. There was a system error. I'm like oh okay but she's like you can keep it you don't have to return it I'm like oh okay I'm not sure how much I'm gonna get refunded because there was a discount um, so it hasn't been refunded to me yet I don't know if it's gonna go on my credit card or store credit I probably should have asked that um, but if you look on Sephora right now at least today filming Thursday the 20th of August um, if you go to the lip to vinyl page and you choose the shade I picked the correct color, but the name of it is wrong. And unfortunately, when I ordered it, it went by the name and not the color that it was showing. So I got the nude Lip to Vinyl, which was very pale, not out of all the ones I could have gotten, didn't want that one. So I'm kind of bummed I got it for free, but hopefully it's okay. I don't know, maybe I can mix it with some other stuff to brighten it up, but uh, yeah, super bummed. I wanted more of a deeper, kind of a deeper pink, rougey shade that wasn't super bright. I forget the name of it. Um, I picked the right color, but got the wrong one. So that that's a bummer, right? <laughs> totally stinks. I'm so disappointed in Sephora that they're screwing up stuff like this. I've never really had that happen where I've got picked the right shade and it was the wrong name. But anyways, the error hasn't been fixed on the website, so I'm I'm pretty sure that's going to continue to happen, but all but one shade is sold out right now. Um so hopefully they fix it soon. Anyways, those are on the way. I'll do a separate video on those. Um, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what's coming out next. Seems like every month, like twice a month, she's coming out with new stuff. She is already launching a special edition packaging of her lipstick and the Supreme sort of red um, packaging. So that's pretty cool. She's always coming out with new things. Um, anyways, those are, this is my whole collection. It's a long video. Um, those I gave you some of my recommendations. We did an eye look and, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know if you have any questions. Please comment below, click like, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.